Yeah, the idea is the beauty of the cheese cycle is that you follow the rhythm of what the organ wants us to live. So you don't need to align with time at the start. The idea is to align with the rhythm of how our organs want to live. So once you follow that rhythm and follow the organ, you then can align that with time. That's the beauty of it. You don't have to start at the time point, but you have to start, you start the day with large intestine energy. And so when we wake up, we automatically work with large intestine chi, the energy of the large intestine. And the large intestine is to clear out the old, So Jos, thank you so much for coming on to the show. Really appreciate your time. I know you're in, in high demand, especially in a time you know where where this is where the chi cycle and the rhythm with with nature becomes more and more obvious to people with with the Western lifestyle and people yes. look for for tools to deal with their lifestyle. So, so thanks for making time also to yep. to talk to our listeners and and share all the amazing insights that you, that you bring. Well, thank you, thank you, Joost, um. You you have been into all sorts of things over the years, and I, I read your resume, and and it's absolutely impressive how how you went from one thing to another and went deeper and deeper into your practice as well as in, into your teachings and learnings. How did you actually get into this this whole space of I guess traditional Chinese medicine, acupuncture, and martial arts and ancient ancient techniques that that you unearthed discovered for yourself? Well, I always was interested in the in the mystical aspect of life. I mean, growing up in urban Germany, it was all very gray. It was all very predictable and it had nothing to do with where my heart was interested in. My heart was into communicating with the dragons and with the withers on top of the mountain and, and evoking spirits and going the mystical realms. But talking to teachers about it was useless and talking to parents about it was also useless because they all said it's, it's a fantasy, it's a dream. And um, then when I started realizing it is something I need to pursue, and obviously it was a very meandering journey going from into psychedelic substances first, but then having discovered Taoism and Chinese medicine and then the Chinese martial art, uh, I rediscovered all that uh, mystical realm that I was so eager to know as a, as a young child. And so for me, having gone into Chinese medicine was in fact a match that came as a dream as a young boy. So it was all natural. For me, Chinese medicine is natural. And Chinese medicine describes mystical states in a rational manner. It goes, it, they talk about multidimensionality. So in Chinese medicine, you talk about moving through several dimensions and lifting your weight and uh, eliminating gravity and flying and so it goes into harry potter territory awesome. but this time with science and with medicine at the same time and the beauty of that is the more you explore yourself into the mystery and the more you follow those practices the stronger and fitter and healthier you become and the more you defeat uh, the aging process even slow it down to the point so it has got only win-win you know it makes life interesting it makes life very colorful It makes life um, always a, a new adventure. You always discover something new, but at the same time, you get healthier and stronger and fitter. So it's it's perfect win-win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, when when talking in, in, in those terms of Chinese medicine, often, I guess, you know, the Westerners have just no concept for it whatsoever. And, and therefore, a reference point, to find a reference point, like when you talk about a transcendending um, meditation or you know and anything that goes into the sort of the spiritual mystical realm do you bother to try to give people a reference point or do you do you go straight to no i always work with people's reference point that's the beauty of chinese medicine chinese medicine the first goal is always to unite never to oppose so it's always harmony taoism is all about harmony so we always will find the common ground A good Chinese master always will find you common ground. It doesn't matter who the person is, I will find a common ground. Because I'm interested in everything, because in Chinese medicine, when you follow the path, you are part of the worldly experiences. So you, you, the Taoist view is not you moving into the mountains and away from everyone. That, some of the sages have done that in order to, for certain 
um, uh, channeling of information and then providing deliveries of, of, of sacred material. But the path in itself needs to be done within the worldly realms. So we have to be right in this world, but not of this world. So this means uh, we need to be interested in everything. I love hot cars. I love big V8s. I love motorbikes. I love music. I love raging music. I, I just like, it's, just, it's endless. I can talk about red wine all day. I can talk about beer all day. I can, I can go anywhere. And um, I always will find a common ground with anyone. And so the person in front of me with whom I have to discuss Chinese medical principles, I will identify what is their personal interest. And in there, then I will apply the philosophy of yin and yang. So if that person is interested in hot cars, I will say yang is like a supercharged V8 and yin is like a push bike. And so I got some reference point established very quickly in that conversation and I'm using their terms because in Chinese medicine, we don't have absolute terms. That's the beauty. We have yin and yang and tao and qi and that's it. The rest is all contextual. That's the beauty of this philosophy. So it's extremely flexible. You can, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Any, you can go anywhere. It is, it, <laughs> It can be, it doesn't matter who it is. You talk to a builder, you talk to a psychologist, you talk to a nurse, you talk to a doctor, you talk to anyone, a farmer, you talk to a drug dealer, you talk to a terrorist, you, a <laughs> bank robber, you always will find a common ground. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I guess we are all in that together. I mean, we give the bank robber that term bank robber, but at the end of the day, we are all of the same substance and you yes. know, just slightly different right inside maybe. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. It's, Yeah, in Chinese medicine, we say that our true nature is obviously the energy being, what we would call the soul. And Chinese medicine has got a name for that. And that's obviously the, the, the Hun, which is infinite being. So we are an infinite being, and that infinite being is structured by the acupuncture meridians. So our infinite nature is structured via meridians, the 12 acupuncture meridians. When we incarnate in the physical, we take on an additional aspect of our, of this reality and we need to process that. But deep down, we are the same infinite being that we always are. So, and so that means whatever that, uh, the journey is that we need to process in this lifetime, it's only an aspect of ourselves. And in Chinese medicine, we, we try to connect to the true being, the inner being. And that is always the same. And that means, If, if someone is a bank robber or a priest, you will find that person within there that is infinite. And then you will find what they're presented at that moment as being a bank robber is only an aspect they need to explore. But underlying there is, there is a truth in themselves which is connected to the true being and you communicate with that. So the bank robber is in fact irrelevant. The true being is the only thing that matters. So in Chinese medicine, we don't focus on how you present yourself. We focus on how we feel who you are in, within. And we connect with that. Wow. It's a totally different process. Yeah, it's a totally different process. But that means it opens up to an infinite discoveries of, of new options because obviously when you only look at that uh, presenting journey that that person is going through, say like a priest or a bank robber, hmm. you're only looking at a, a fraction of what there could be. But once you're connecting to that inner true self, you actually got like infinite options to explore avenues of communications and it's 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 never ending in terms of new discoveries so it becomes exciting all the time yeah 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 well i mean that's a how old is the, this philosophy oh, roughly? Yeah, no one really knows it's that's <laughs> the beauty it's a, it's a complete mystery yeah I mean, some sources say it started around 15,000 years ago with master Yu, and master Yu was the first person who realized that being here in the physical Uh, creates a conflict because our nature is infinite, is energy, the energy being and the soul. But then we, when we're in the physical, we perceive life as temporary because we will die. But the perception of death is not, it's not real because it doesn't, it, it doesn't reflect our true nature, which is infinite. So um, Master Yu realized that this is going to be an, an endless cause for conflict. So his focus was to unite the inner world with the outer world so that you can actually start realizing your true self. And so that was the first process of cultivating yourself as in accord with 
meditation and qi and things like that. Um, the interesting thing is that scholars believe Master Yu was in fact the woman. So, it, uh, so the first master, a female, started that process, which then was handed down to the next generation, the next generation, and then it evolved. The idea that we are uh, uh, by nature an infinite being that has incarnated in the physical world and therefore have a dual realization of our true nature, which can cause conflict, which then can only be resolved by cultivating via meditation practices. So that idea, since Master Yu has evolved from generation to generation in all kinds of personal different applications. And then about four or 5,000 years ago, it became more obvious to what it is. And then two and a half thousand years ago, it became Taoism in its form, then it became Lao Tzu. But then um, the, at the same time, you had the development in India. And there's all kinds of speculation that Lao Tzu went to India to teach the Buddha. But then the Buddhists say the Buddha went to China to teach Lao Tzu. So, <laughs> <laughs> Everyone claims it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Then people say Lao Tzu actually didn't exist. <laughs> of course. Uh, the whole thing is there's like, it's irrelevant. The yes. fact is that we, every generation develops this process of cultivation to the next level. So it's evolving with humans. It was given to us by heaven, according to Chinese medicine, and it's evolving from generation to generation. So now in 2020, we have got the, the highest realization ever of how to cultivate this process of being an infinite being in physical form. For example, Tai Chi that has evolved officially for the past 600 years. And before that, it was developed through Master Yu practices. Um, at 2020, the Tai Chi is now the most evolved ever. So every generation makes it better. Every generation that comes through and takes on the task of evolving the cultivational practice makes it better. So it, it improves with each generation. So what we know in, two, what we know in 2020 about Tai Chi um, uh, of, of is far beyond what people knew 500 years ago about Tai Chi. So when we talk about ancient practices, we have to be very, very careful of what we're saying here because mm -hmm. the idea is ancient but the practice in 2020 is better than ever before. That's so epic. Some, yeah, so good. Yeah, that's, Such good news. Yeah. Yes, yeah. It's not much point. Um, you're copying an ancient practice. You have to take the ancient idea. And then, but you have to look at the current lineage, the, current, the, the holder who has actually developed it to the best, and you follow that. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's really good. <laughs> oh, I, I love that. I love that, man. And, um, you know, it's, it's such a bro broad field philosophy, however you want to see, like, you know, it goes all the way from being an infinite being to just having this one lifetime and this one moment right now to, to do certain things, I guess, you know, and anything in between you can, you can zoom into. And if you don't mind, like, I would, I would love to start just with what, yes. what you, you would call, you know, what the lifestyle medicine man, as you, as you also called, what, what you have um, developed in terms of the chi cycle that you see uh, relevant for the modern world. And I think from there we can, you know, go into all different tangents, but it would be great just yeah. to set a little bit of a really practical, really like, like one lifetime thing or one day thing. And then, then we, you know, we can take it anywhere. But I just love how, how you're saying basically, yes, the idea is ancient but we have to make it relevant for today. Otherwise, basically chasing ghosts, I guess. Yes, yes, yeah. That's the problem. I mean, the fact is that we are always connected to, to our true nature. So our true nature as soul, which is our energy being, it, we have access to it every moment of the day. But at the same time, we also live in the worldly, in the worldly affairs. So with the chi cycle, the idea is to align with time so that you have the opportunity to be connected to the energy. So that means you do whatever you need to do in the worldly affairs, whatever the business is, but at the same time, you're keeping one foot firmly planted in your energy world. And because if you are connected to your energy world, you, you actually refuel your system because this is where Chinese medicine and Western medicine differ because health in Chinese medicine is a, result, is a result of an energy organ and a physical organ. 
So when we talk spleen, when we talk the liver, when we talk about the kidneys, each organ has got an energetic reality or energetic existence, mm -hmm. but at the same time, a physical existence. The physical existence of the kidney um, equals to that what Western medicine talks about. But then the physical organ also has an energy organ. And in Chinese medicine, the energy organ was before the physical organ existed. The energy organ is with us in our form as a soul. So when we, when we die and move on to our astral world, heaven where we come from, we actually take the organs with us, the energy organs. Mm -hmm. But the physical organ stays behind. The problem is that the, the physical organ derives its energy and its nutrient supply more from the energy organ than the physical organ. No way. All these supplements are bought. Yes. Not so what, <laughs> no, 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 no. You need them because what they do is they will actually evoke processes that will open up the meridians so that the energy can come in to the physical organ. So your physical kidney, um, you do whatever you do in terms of keeping the physical kidney in shape, but it's, it receives its nurture from the energy kidney. And that needs a different way of living. So if you ignore the energy that this organ is reliant on, you actually deprive the organ, the kidneys, of its true nurture. So the kidney becomes more and more deficient. So as a result of that is we're getting urinary problems. And incontinence is now a major issue in the Western world. Yeah. More and more people, 40 years of age, 50 years of age, getting incontinence. 80% of the population over 60 has got incon incontinence problems. So um, that's a weakening of the kidney, of the kidney energy. The kidney energy cannot keep the, the physical organ in its shape. So that means the physical organ suffers and the kidney is responsible for the urinary process. Now it weakens and now people get free from urination. They get dribbling up to urination. They, um, they have to go every half an hour to the toilet. And um, like incontinence uh, uh, products in, in chemist warehouse and is now one of the biggest section. Wow. And people who are stuck in traffic for one hour need to take with them sanitary equipment because they need to go to the toilet. And you can't, that one hour traveling um, uh, uh, without going to the toilet leads, leads to wetting off the underpants, basically. So we got, we got adult diapers as a new industry we never had before. So f from your framework, when you look at these physical, well, you know, physically appearing problems, yes. would you say, this makes a lot of sense looking at society right now and there's a really particular problem and that's why it's triggered in so many bodies. Of course, every body's different and it's a really complex system, I guess, to figure out what triggers what yes. and what kidneys suffer. But if, if you go really straight to like, if it would be a black and white, white view why the kidneys would be affected, what would it be? Um, one of the biggest problems is we have turned into a secular society. Okay, like... People have moved, we, we're not connected to our true nature anymore. Because like till about 40 years ago, people still once a week went to the church. At least they had one reference point where they, where they, uh, at, at, where they recognized themselves, I am, there is something else to life other than me. And so these days, no one quotes the churches anymore. No one quotes the Pope at dinner parties. So people have, <laughs> people, I mean, you can try, but you're going to get blank looks. <laughs> and very few people go to the churches. Yeah? So uh, and when, if someone of your age goes to the church, everyone looks very strange. Why do you go to the church? Whereas 40, 50 years ago, it was the norm. So at least once a mm. week, you went into the church and then you were listening to incredible, powerful spiritual hymns written by Johann, Johann Sebastian Bach and by this incredible mm. masters who understood how to evoke spiritual energies. So while you were in church and you concentrated on God, what happens is you actually, the whole mass of like 60 people, 100 people in the congregation, all focused on being spiritual in that moment. And at that moment, it opened up the meridian systems 
and then the priest on, on the front, and then the, the hymns, the beautiful songs. And what happened that it opened, it opened up the energy flow and now the spiritual energies could enter the body and then actually fuel all the organs with energy. Mm. So the kidney needed its, uh, it needs its fuel from, from the universe, from the cosmic chi, heaven chi. It needs its chi from spirit. So um, if it doesn't get its chi from spirit, it will, it will get weak. And so at least once a week in, in the church, at least it opened up the meridians and the chakras and all the energy point so that the organ system was flooded with heavenly chi, with spiritual chi, with spiritual energies. Mm. Then afterwards, back to world, back to you. But at least you, it, it rejuvenated the system internally. So uh, these days, people don't do that anymore. And the result of that is they have put all their faith into success and working harder. And they are more stimulated through digital media. And um, so every, everyone is working longer hours and you are under far more stimulation. You're keeping the phone up at night. So at least in the old days, people slept all night. The television turned off at 10 o'clock because that was the last channel, the last show. <laughs> you had to go to bed. There was nothing yeah. else to do. Yeah. So at my time, while then when you slept, the body opens up, the meridian system opens up because sleep is, in, is a mystical business. It's mystical. So when we sleep, the, the meridian system opens up and now cosmic chi or spiritual energy enters the body and rejuvenates the whole organ system. So now the kidney is getting all this beautiful spiritual energy and rejuvenates the kidney. But these days, what people do, they sleep with the iPhone and they check for messages. They're going to argue with people on Facebook. And so they stop the body receiving spiritual energies. So by the next day they get up, they're completely depleted. So now what happens is the, the physical organ, the kidney in particular, is not getting any food. Mm. So you, it's like driving a Ferrari or a Lamborghini with petrol that only has 60% octane. Mm. Not yeah. possible. Trying to drive a BMW with 70% octane it will not work. The no, it, will it will not work. <laughs> you need to rev it up. You need high quality petrol. So mm. this is what we're experiencing now. People running the body on very low quality fuel. Yeah? Mm. So which is why we take more and more supplements in order to try to replenish the fuel. But the, 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 the fuel is spiritual. It's spiritual energy. So now we're 2020. No one goes to the church anymore. And everyone's up all night. And the result of mm -hmm. that is we've got organs that are completely harmed and are withering away. That is weak organs. And as a result of that is we have lifestyle diseases as never before. Cardiovascular disease is going through the roof anxiety disorders coming up. Um, we, as the World Health Organization, who estimated in 2020, we have 40 million people die of lifestyle disease. So it's 40 million people that don't need to die. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that's a result of lifestyle because if you live a secular society, if you live a secular life, that means you're not, you're not tanking, you're not fueling spiritual energies and you're up all night you're causing lifestyle disease. That's how simple it is. <laughs> wow. Yes, 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 right. That's how simple it is. We are spiritual beings in a physical world. We need, first of all, tank by spiritual energy. Yeah. So for people to fix that, I mean, you know, you probably wouldn't recommend that they should go to, to church necessarily, no. unless, you know, <laughs> like, but, you know, I can, like, is a nature walk just as good or just with the right no, mind? No, 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 no. It doesn't you, work. No. It's like going to church and listen to pop. <laughs> <laughs> not a good yeah okay you gotta when you go to church you listen so you want sebastian bach is a yes. master is a genius mm. the, the ode to joy they they have these guys understand how frequencies work they understand this the keys of c sharp the the endless um, um experience of ecstasy ecstatic states of joy mm. and so um when you go to a church you listen to to song to hymns that open up the meridian systems. So when you, when, you, when you read the scriptures, in there is an opening up of something. Obviously, yeah. it feels outdated these days, 
but there's a system underlying it and the system is open up the meridians then you have transmission of spiritual energy that's that is the aim of the church so obviously in 2020 we need a different system yes yeah? and so going going for a walk in the park will not open up your meridians it's like as i said it's like going to the church and listen to pop will not work yes yeah the <laughs> It doesn't open up the meridians. Pop will not open up the meridians. Uh, trance music does to a certain degree. So this is okay. why people love, love it. But you can't have trance music in church. I mean, you can try. <laughs> Do no, it. no. And it's not everyone's, it's not everyone's <laughs> flavor, right? So what would be examples like, you know, more common examples that actually we might just not recognize as, as, as such? Family dinners? Uh, no. No, not either. Okay, you tell me. The social gathering is a good thing. Now, this is where we need to understand that there is our body is designed to cultivate energy. This is the beauty of our body. We have got arms and legs and, and we've, got, we've got a posture. And the spine is enormously crucial because if the spine is aligned correctly, you open up what we call in Chinese medicine, the, the Du channel. And that's the, that's the meridian, the main meridian right in the spine. And beside the, the meridian, the Du channel, are the Hua Tu Jia Ji points. They are about half an inch bilateral. And there is where the serpent creeps up, like the chakra opening up. Yeah? So there's three very important meridians, the, the, the spine, the Du channel, and then besides the spine. So we need to know how to align the body so that, this, that the spine opens up, so that the meridian opens up. Once the meridian is opened up, you actually, the, uh, the energy will start flowing. So this is where people simply need to learn some practices such as Qigong practices, yoga practices, that they need to understand how to breathe. Because if you breathe correctly, you will open up the spine. Mm -hmm. Chiropractic, the, the chiropractor works with your spine and they resolve most of the pathologies simply by freeing the, the spine. Wow. So, so the medicine is based on make the energy flow. That's what chiropractor do, make the energy flow. And that's your spine. So when you learn Qigong practices, Tai Chi, when you learn yoga, you also know how to breathe. You learn how to breathe. You will actually start to open up those meridian pathways, which then allow energies to come in from spiritual energies to come in. Yes. So this is what the classic hymns of Bach and Beethoven trying to do to open up. So we got to do the same thing. Yeah. So um, the more effective we become with learning these practices, the healthier we will become. So this is where it's like, I always tell everyone the most important investment in life is to study Tai Chi, to study Qigong, to learn Tai Chi, Tai Qigong, to learn, um, yoga practices to learn what these cultivation practices are that have evolved since Master Yu 15,000 years ago. Wow. So, wow. because if you know how, if you understand how to work with your energy flow and you understand how to open up, that means you will instantly correct symptoms into health. So, you may get a headache, boom, you open up a meridian, headache is gone. You get a stiff neck, you open up with the meridian, stiff neck is gone. You got a stomach problem, you work up the meridian, stomach is gone. Stomach pain is gone. And that means you always, as soon as there's a slight symptom arising, you instantly correct the body, the posture, and make the energy flow. So that in that moment, the symptom disappears. So yes. you're always in, in an acute state where you constantly correct the body. So it never becomes a chronic disease. It never gets into lifestyle disease because you're always correcting the body. You're so always, would, yeah. So that would raise the the assumption to me that I don't really need to see a doctor as long as I do my practice on a daily basis and correct. Yes, correct. Yeah, right. I, I, so the yeah. last time I saw a doctor was thirty years ago for for a diving exam. I, <laughs> I, I, I don't even have a medic medic bank. I don't know what to do with this. It's yeah. My, yeah. It's, oh. I don't. Yeah, I don't go there. If I got a symptom, I, I move that through his chi. Yes. How long have you been practicing for? Uh, it's, it's almost 40 years. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's in 81 I started. So that's like, yeah, yeah, 39 years. So it's yeah. my life. 
Uh, and the longer you do it, the, the more efficient you become. But this is the chi cycle. The idea of the chi cycle is to make your whole day a practice. So that means you actually fully engage with your worldly affairs, whatever business you run, but you always are fully aware at the same time that you're processing, that you're cultivating a certain meridian, a certain organ. So for example, if it's between 9 a.m. and 11 a.m., I'm fully aware of the spleen. So I'm, 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 I keep focus on the spleen, so I'm cultivating my spleen energy. So while I'm working hard, I'm also keeping my uh, spiritual energy moving via spleen. So, so that means from an outside perspective, I look like I, I, I live an ordinary life. I participate with others, but internally, I'm working in, 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 in mystical realms. So people always see me being part of the physical world, but I'm, I'm actually more in the mystical realms than in the physical. That's always what I wanted as a young boy. So I don't need drugs anymore for that reason, because I'm always in that state. But when people meet me, they don't, they don't sense that, that they can see I'm, I'm very centered and grounded, and, uh, but I'm actually in an altered state all the time. That's, that's awesome. the beauty. That's why Taoism is also referred to as the art of drunkenness. So you're actually always in a state of, you're always in an altered state because spiritual energy always gives you an altered state. You're always in sort of like in a, an experience of joyfulness. So that means whatever you engage with, you always got, you, there's always a, a connection to how to bring joy into this via internal practice. It's a good system. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, yeah, and I know, and, and people might have, have read your book um, higher and higher, and and I think it, it explains quite quite um, colorfully, you know, where where you've been and that you have tested most most drugs. And I, I don't want to go there because you know I, it's super yeah. entertaining, but I, I would love to talk to, about something else. But I guess yes. you have a point of reference that gives you different authority to say like this is even better than the best drugs, and that, and I love that that outcome of, of, of your yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Um, uh, drugs stop you you that's the thing that i always i mean i don't want to talk about drugs yet, but drugs are they limit the spiritual experiences so when people say drugs open up the spirit um yeah i debate that yeah, the, the real the real experience is far beyond drugs yeah gotcha and this life this is the this the, it, it leaves drugs for dead <laughs> and i lived i grew up in amsterdam so i got my access but the real thing leaves drugs for that yeah hey um when would you mind walking us through the the chi cycle yeah. a little bit so that we sort of see sort of how that clock works I, i would really appreciate that because when when i listened to you doing that i i have heard that before from you and it it just really gave me great reference of like this is what you're talking about this is what's possible yeah the idea is the beauty of the chi cycle is that you follow the rhythm of what the organ wants us to live. So you don't need to align with time at the start. The idea is to align with the rhythm of how our organs want to live. So once you follow that rhythm and follow the organ, you then can align that with time. That's the beauty of it. You don't have to start at the time point, but you have to start, you start the day with large intestine energy. And so when we wake up, we automatically work with large intestine chi the energy of the large intestine. And the large intestine is to clear out the old. So the reason why that is important is because we want to start a new day and we can't start the new day if the thoughts of yesterday are still dominating our today. So we need, first of all, clear out what happened yesterday because yesterday is it's gone, it's dead. Every day is a new incarnation. Every day is, is a new day, a new life. And that needs to be, first of all, energetically be connected. And the large intestine energy will do that for us. Each organ has got its job. So we've got 12 organs in our body and every organ has got a very specific purpose in order to, for us <clears throat> to move towards health and happiness and spiritual realization. So whoever created that, us was very smart, very intelligent because they gave everything what we need. They gave us everything what we need. And so the large intestine is the first step. That means we start the day, first of all, we, we always have water beside the bed. And so the, the idea is to move, uh, to develop the skill of drinking one liter 
or one and a half liters of water straight on waking up. That needs to be developed. We can't do that immediately. But what happens is, um, is by drinking water straight on waking up, you actually flush the system because the whole body has been uh, deprived of fluids throughout the night in order to ensure good sleep. Unless you get weak kidneys, if you get up in the middle of the night, it means you got weak kidneys. But if that means you need kidney energy building herbs and Chinese medicine got incredible herbs. So you will stay up, you will, um, you will be able to sleep all night. Um, so um, the aim is for the body to sleep all night and not to get interrupted by going to the toilet all the time. So it can do its energetic work of rejuvenating each organ. Yes. So that means it has to, is the, the body's deprived of fluids because at nighttime we do an energetic work. It doesn't require the fluids. But when we wake up, first of all, you've got to get the fluids happening. It's like a car that gets started. You start the engine. It now needs to move the oil throughout the whole system. And that's water. Yeah. So we start the day with drinking lots of water first. So we just have like one liter of water beside the bed. We drink it. And now it flushes the system. Now the large intestine energy can do its work and we go immediately to the toilet and obviously we flush the system. So if we have a bowel movement in the mornings, large intestine time straight on waking up, it's a sign of health. If you need coffee or cigarette before you can evacuate your bowels, it means you've got um, stagnation in the large intestine. And the mornings will allow you to rectify that. Drinking water first will activate large intestine, she peristalsis will occur and the bowel movement will be good. Um, then um, after that, we, uh, we, can, we start the day with large intestine chi by doing a qigong practice. We're doing core training. We're doing movements of the body in order to move chi. This resembles pretty much the old days because in, the, in good old days, people, when they got up, they got, went to the field and moved around. They were squatting up and down. They were milking the cows. They were squatting. They're lifting weights. They had to lift rocks around. So for two hours, three hours, they were very active. So um, the, no one got up and straight into coffee in those days. So the body's <laughs> not designed to get into drinking and food when we wake up. Okay. So the body, first of all, needs to detox itself. And large intestine time is about detox. So that means now after, the, after having been in the bathroom, the toilet, we then uh, we do any kinds of movement like core training, which you, can, which you can research on Google, on YouTube, it provides you with lots of incredible moves that will activate large intestine energy because you want to activate the energy that is in the, in the lower part of the abdominal area, which is exactly where the rectum is. That's the chi. <clears throat> you want to activate that point, which we call chi high, chi high, which is C of chi. And if you activate that point, you will actually start distributing chi through all the body. And as the chi, the energy is now moving through the rest, through the entire body, it's moving through all the meridian and it will clear out the meridians of the negative thoughts of the previous day. You see, negative thinking, it's not our true nature. Negative thinking is acquired. It's a byproduct of the physical world. Our energy being, the infinite being, has, can't have negative thinking. Negative thinking is the physical world. Our soul in our heart is only positive and love. But being in the physical, engaging with other people, energy remains behind. And this becomes a stagnation in the meridians. And that then uh, develops into negative thinking. So negative thinking is, is a stagnation of chi. And it's large intestine that is responsible for clearing the, um, the negative thoughts. But large intestine is also responsible for causing negative thoughts. So right. the large, yeah, the large intestine is the organ that actually, uh, that actually allows you to think positive. So we don't do positive thinking in Chinese medicine. We clear the meridians and we work with large intestine. We activate large intestine meridians. And once we uh, activate large intestine energy, it will clear the blockages. And as the blockages are cleared, we think positive because our true nature is positive. The, the negative thinking I love is it. yeah 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 the negative thinking is like the cloud, but our true nature is the blue sky behind, 
And um, yes. so when you do the, the large intestine, clears the clouds so you can see the blue sky. So when you, do the, when you follow that through, um, uh, whatever practices you want to work with, if it's yoga, if it's um, a Tai Chi, if it's Qigong, if it's weight training, whatever it is. But if you understand what it does, it will enhance the practice by 10 times. Understand why you do it, understand what it does, the ordinary practice becomes profound. Mm. If you don't know why you're doing and you distract yourself with listening to music or gossiping with other people, you only get a 10% in benefit. But if you understand what you do, you get in one hour what otherwise would take 10 hours. So you make life more efficient. I, I love that aspect. And, and I think it's really important to point out that digestion means one, like if you have a, me, have a heavy meal, then, you know, that's a physical thing that moves through and that requires cle cleansing and, and, you know, and then just the process might be a little bit slower or you need a little bit more yeah. practice or what have you, but it goes just as much in the energetic realm, right? If you have had heavy news or, or had, had a, for one reason or another, something that you need to digest in the, on the mental level or on the emotional yeah. level, it's just the same thing, isn't it? Like in the morning you have to deal with it and, and your body is designed to deal with it at both levels yeah. or three levels. Yeah, this is where um, the idea is not to open up to news. Don't listen to news in the mornings. Do large intestine clearing first because it's not doing any, it's not improving your life if you, if you know what's happening. Yeah, it's just like, so if, 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 if the aliens invade the planet and you're going to do your practice, I'd say do your practice first because <laughs> I'll do anything anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so don't open up to news to worldly affairs till when you finish clear negativity first clear out the stagnation first is not helping you to know what's going on yeah but to clear the body is crucial for health because if you get straight into news and want to know what's happening it will block the energy what will what you will actually cause illness and that's not helping you no. And I heard you saying before that basically one main reason for cancer happening is that people don't give the body the time to actually get rid of those cells, which naturally would be um, eliminated in the morning, not all. Or, yes, correct. Know, yeah. The, the yeah. idea is to constantly um, elim eliminate bad cells. Mm. I mean, uh, uh, we know enough about cancer to understand if, if the relationship between good cells and bad cells gets out of proportion, illness will occur. And that could be a reason why some unfortunate people develop cancer. Uh -huh. And it could be also possible that this could be the mean for prevention of cancer. So if you keep a, a, a good bodies dominating of the, of the bad cells, you, um, it's like the, the more good bodies you have in your cells, the more, the, the more healthy you are. That's, that's, that's the fact. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, what this means is, like large intestine energy will will free the body of of that what will cause um that will cause pathology yeah and uh -huh. that uh, because when it comes to pathology by the time it develops into a specific symptom we know so much has happened beforehand that we can't remember by the time the symptom appears that causes concern and we address that it's so far removed from the, from the origin. We don't even know how it started. And so in that regard, a lot of, a lot of the pathology is mystical. We don't understand. Yeah? In Chinese medicine, when people present with complex pathology, we don't understand. But we go backwards in the progression and trying to, trying to find the point where it could have started. Mm -hmm. Don't focus on the pathology. Focus on where it could have started. So you go, to, you go to the source, you go to the origin, rather than trying to deal with the pathology. I've seen so many incredibly complicated pathologies in my time. And by not focusing on the pathology, by simply aligning the body with the energy flow, the person was aligning themselves with the origin of the progression, and suddenly the symptoms disappeared. And never once did we address the pathology. That's the beauty of Chinese medicine. We never address the pathology. Yeah, that's why I'll be, I don't do I don't I don't do blood tests. I don't do any any tests because I don't want to know. That's a, it's it's a stage I'm not interested in. It's a development of a stage, say number twenty seven. I'm only interested in being at stage one and two and three. 
Yes. Mm -hmm. So if something proliferates in my blood, it's irrelevant because I will either way, I always will focus on one, two, and three. So it's irrelevant what the name comes up. That's why I don't do blood tests. That's why I don't do any tests. Yeah. Uh, and uh, um, I refuse to because it's irrelevant. Because either way, even if I would get a test or whatever, I still would go back to, I need to be at stage one, two, and three. <laughs> and that's large intestine. It always starts with large intestine. The T cycle always starts with lung and large intestine. These organs are partnered. And the aim of the lung and large intestine is, first of all, take a deep breath, deep breath, and then you clear out the system. Deep breath, clear out, deep breath, and breathe it all out. Mm. Lung first, breathe it in, then breathe it out, breathe it in. So you breathe in the good and you breathe out the bad. Mm. You breathe in the, the good cells, you breathe out the bad cells. And um, so the lung puts it in, large intestine, evacuates. Gotcha. So, very so, smart, very smart. I love it. And a very, very simple too, as long as you have yes, the guidance yeah, what to do at what time. Yeah. 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 yeah we, that's the beauty. A true health is always simple. If it's complicated, it's not true health. One, if, question, yeah. one question I have around the timing of things. I, I believe a large intestine starts at 5 a.m. Oh. Yeah? Yes. So, so modern lifestyle is a funny thing because we don't necessarily live by natural light. Plus, you know, like we move in time zones and all the rest of it. Like how is there an inner body clock that we really refer to? Or do we literally talk about the... the the sun clock that we see outside. So, so is there any yes. movement in it or ha does it have to be 5 a.m. and which 5 a.m. is it? Yeah, this is, this is a good point that comes, comes up and that's what I'm trying to say. First of all, align with the rhythm, with the flow of the progression, then trying to align with time. But the fact is, it doesn't matter what time you start, you always enter the progression by going large intestine first. That means before you do anything else, you clear blockages that have developed from the previous day. So you wake up to clear the meridians and large intestine is designed to clear. Of course, there's an internal clock that is connected to the, to the universe as the absolute. And that is the energy enters um, the, light, the lung at, at a reference point that we now in modern times refer to as 3 a.m. In ancient times, they didn't have clocks. But they understood at that time, what we call 3 a.m. is when the energy enters large into the lung. And then at 5 o'clock, it goes into the large intestine. And then at 7 a.m., it goes into the stomach meridian. And at 9, it goes to the spleen and then to the heart at 11. So it moves around till then at, until the next day, 24 hours later, it leaves at the liver meridian at, at 3 a.m. to enter the lung at 3 a.m. Yes. So that... Um, that, ha that flow has been an ancient observation. So we have put times onto it now that makes the reference more suitable to our time. If someone um, is trapped or has a life of whatever, shift work and whatever, mm. needing, um, then you obviously can't do 5 a.m., but you, the energy still flows exactly the same pattern. And in order to, the, the aim of the chi cycle is to connect with the energy flow. Because that means you, you ha actually activate and, and um, you rejuvenate the energy organs. Yeah? And that means you start, first of all, activating large intestine energies. So regardless of what time on the clock you wake up, mm. you always get first of all into practice. Always clear the blockages. That's the first thing. Clear, drink the water, flush the system, go to the toilet, clear the blockages through breathing techniques, core training, etc then automatically automatic uh, then you activate stomach energy and that means you you work now with uh, because you've cleared everything out now you bring in the good and the stomach energy that body clockwise enters at 7 a.m this which is the second stage it's now about bringing in good nutrients because you have allowed to free the body of bad cells and you free the body of all kind of uh, uh, junk and now you need to bring in the good so that now, so you cleared the body, you detox the body. Now, sometime between seven and nine, or the next stage is to actually have the right meal. So you can extend the large intestine pattern to three, four hours, as long as you understand you're in, in detox phase, and then you take it into stomach time. But what we're doing here is the fact that we, after it has been cleared, 
we need to provide the substance for the new, for the good to establish itself. It needs to be grounded. And stomach energy is about grounding. It become very grounded, centered, grounded. So we clear out first, now we get grounded. And that means stomach loves beautiful, sweet, um, warm foods. So uh, this is where now everything goes against <laughs> Western thinking. Um, we, in Western thinking, we, we're thinking healthy food is uh, raw food. You know, yeah, like a green food. smoothie in the morning. Yeah, in Chinese medicine, it's we talk qi. You know, so um, we want we detox the body first with large intestine. So we don't wake up to warm breakfast. We work up to, to clearing first. That's very important. So the, the breakfast is stage two. It's never stage one. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so that means, but because it cleared out the, the all the bad stuff, the the body wants something warm and substantial. Um, I've tried, I trained, I know incredible fit people, 80 years of age and so fit and healthy and happy. And, <laughs> um, no one of them is, has juices for breakfast, yeah. all congee cooked breakfast. Like lots of them, the way they do it, they, they put up the pot with rice and congee and, and cook it for four hours and then they sit down and eat it. Yeah. So we want a warm cooked breakfast. Because what, what happens with the cooked breakfast is you actually get grounded, you get centered, you sink into your body. And um, that can be like cooked from quina, it can be oats, it can be buckwheat, it can be anything. Buckwheat pancakes, quina pancakes, as long as it's cooked. And then with it, some nice honey. And then we have Chinese herbs with that. We take lots of Chinese herbs. Uh, um, so we take really good Chinese herbs, like and depending on what you need building. For example, if you've got kidney issues, you want to work with a uh, formula that builds your kidneys, or you want to, if you've got digestive problems, you want to work with herbs that build your digestive. So in Chinese medicine, we always take herbs. I always have herbs. Every day I'm having some kind of herb. <laughs> so um, we, the idea is to constantly operate in the, pro, in the uh, prevention of disease mm -hmm. and correction of symptoms. So we want to be, in, uh, with the chi cycle, the aim is you, you want to operate constantly between stage one and stage two and three. Mm -hmm. You never want to go stage 17. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you may start at stage 17, but it doesn't take you long before you actually operate all the time between one and three. When you uh, say stage, you mean basically like um, level of, of damage or level of, of illness? Yes. Yeah? yes. yes. Okay. yes. Cool. Yeah. So you, you have corrected the body so far that you in an acute situation all the time, yeah. never in the chronic. So that means instead of suppressing the symptom, it's deeper and deeper and deeper, where it, at the end, no one knows what's going on anymore. Mm. So you've got all kinds of symptoms like fatigue, blood pressure problems, um, anxiety, depression, digestive problems, body ache, and you present to the doctor, and they don't know what's going on, they can't find anything. It's mm. too much, it's so depressed, so low. Mm. So what we do is we, uh, in Chinese medicine, with the chi cycle, we don't worry about those symptoms. We don't focus on that. We return the person as quick as possible to the stage one, two, and three. Mm -hmm. So by the time they present chronic diseases, we're talking stage 40, stage 30, stage 35. Yes. But I have seen, I've, uh, the beauty of having worked with so many tens of thousands of people in my time, um, I've seen the, the toughest situation improve very quickly because the body is an incredible healing power. If you, if you tell the body you want to heal and you give the body the right method that the energy body will recognize as being ingrained in them because we are programmed, we are, we are programmed for, to cultivate. We are an incredible power for resilient beings. Like yeah. yogis and Kung Fu people are, that, that can really stress the body in an incredible situation and never cause injury, yeah? Because the body is so resilient, yes? And so this is where we need to understand, if we make the body recognize what we do, it will immediately act on it. Mm -hmm. If you do a certain breathing technique, the body immediately recognizes, oh, that's me, that's me. Yeah. Your energy body comes forward straight away. So if you do a certain spine move, Suddenly, oh, yes. Yeah. And most of us already done those practices in past lives anyway. So we do one, we go to one class and suddenly, oh, yeah, I get this straight away because we've done it before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So most of us already have been there. We just need to give the body, uh, connect them to that memory because the memory for the moves is already in, on the cellular level, it's already ingrained. Yes. So this is why we live in good times because we have access to all kinds of techniques. We just need to know what to do. And what happens once you do it, you will, the body will immediately recognize it. And in, in a very short time, it will take you from stage 35 to stage three. <laughs> Man, I love it. And then you stay there, obviously. You never move away from stage three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. You keep up the practice every day. Like you, yes. I think you did miss your practice once in the last 20 years. Yeah, no. yeah. I did. That was um, 22 years ago. I did one day. I didn't do it. <laughs> I, did, I, did, I didn't like it. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Well, that's, that's impressive. Yeah, hey, that's, I know we're a bit on a timeline. Um, I, w I would love to go further through through the whole yeah. cycle, and I hope I have another opportunity to talk to you. But um, yeah, I do know you have to go. There are three quick questions that we normally ask people on the show, just to yeah, give that give get a little bit of a point of a ref reference. I don't know. Probably don't have much time to answer this, but yeah, yeah, no, no, First no, one would be, what are your top three? What what are the three reasons that you normally get up? Like, what are the thoughts that give you that motivation to get up out of bed every morning? All right, okay, good good question. Um, okay, so in Chinese medicine, we always the progression in Chinese medicine in Taoist philosophy from the senses to the mind to qi. So the more you train yourself to follow the qi cycle, the more you move away from the senses away from what the mind thinks towards chi. Mm. So when I wake up, my senses don't uh, tell me what to do. They don't direct me. My mind doesn't direct me. My organs direct me. Wow. My chi directs me. So I wake up and my chi calls me. My organs call me. I can't sleep in. It's not possible. No, it doesn't matter how, how late I stay up and whatever. Yeah. It's just, if I've got big things happening and uh, uh, I come home late, it's by, by 4.30, my, my, my chi is calling me. So Great. my chi is getting me up, not, not my mind. Of course, my mind has got totally different ideas. And my senses, <laughs> they, they have nothing to do with that. They, they, they want to be, my senses want to stay in bed. Yeah. My, my senses want to sleep in. Yeah. My senses don't want to face the day. My senses want to immediately watch video all day, like Rambo or Rocky. Yeah. Or, or, or soapies <laughs> it wants my senses want to uh want to avoid yes. that's what senses do you want to avoid you go for pleasure my mind got all kind of reasons why i should do other things instead mm. why it's stupid to do two hour practice because i've got so much work to do i'd rather just argue with people on facebook about their about, about, about the command last week mm. i'd rather engage immediately with, with a project at work, whatever. Yeah. That's my mind telling me. But my chi wants me to get up and clear the blockages in the large intestine meridians and then the, all the other 11 meridians. So the beauty of that is, of the chi cycle is, the more you work with the chi cycle, the more you start naturally applying this progression from the senses to the mind to chi. So in the end, it's not you thinking that moves you it's your chi that moves you uh -huh. so thinking doesn't move me anymore yeah yeah and as you cultivate your chi more and more of course you know it's a strong and strong yeah she takes out. over my my energy it. body my yeah. soul moves me my yeah. energy body moves me. not my mind no. not my um, um i use my mind to correct the posture yeah. i use my mind to think how to move those moves i use the mind to work okay, I'm gonna move with this posture now. I'm gonna work with TRX ropes for this exercise. I'm using my mind for that. But my organs move me to do this. And it's a different thing. So life, in fact, becomes more and more effortless. And this is the art of non doing, Wu Wei, that is so mistranslated in the Western world. Because this, the art of non doing means my senses don't direct me. My mind doesn't direct me. Chi is doing it. So that means my acquired self is not doing anything. My chi body is doing it. I'm, every morning when I get up, I don't get up. My chi gets me up. Yeah? I don't go up. Then people say, what time do you get up? I don't know. I don't get up. My chi gets me up. Yeah? Thanks. It, it's a totally different world, but it's marvelous. <laughs> Second question. Yes? Second question. Um, 
that's a contemporary one. Like at the moment, like what excites you the most? I I know you just um you know you, you just um wrote another book uh clock clock onto health clock I believe yeah, yeah. you know yeah. so so maybe yeah. that's a topic that that you yeah a, a, a clock that's right um or is it um yeah what 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 gets you up at the moment at the moment particularly like what excites you at the moment what's your focus right now um my focus is obviously always to evolve my understanding of the chi and how to transmit my perception in the most suitable and most efficient way so obviously mm. that's my my role as a therapist and my involvement with writing books obviously um my aim is always <clears throat> how can i explain this in the most suitable way yeah. so i all, all the time is what gets me up and what what i think about when i use my mind rather than my chi is okay how can i actually explain this yeah, yeah. and yes. um uh, because this is what what i learned over the years, it gets better and better, but it took a long time to get there. Yeah. When I started this, my explanations were completely ridiculous. No one listened to it. And then I realized I need to try more and more and more. I need to learn how to express myself suitably and effectively. So what gets me up uh, in that point is how to express myself suitably and effectively. Because if I can express myself suitably and effectively, my liver chi flows freely, and that means I feel happy. If I can't express myself suitably and effectively and everyone opposes me, my liver chi stagnates and I feel irritable and cranky. So I am programmed, we are all programmed to learn the skill of communication. And that is something we need to learn. It's just, that's a skill. It's not something that comes natural. So that, that's the second thing that gets me up. Yeah. Um, finishing off with a really light question, I always say. What, what do you think from your point of view, is the reason for our existence? Like, why, yeah. why does this human existence, you know, why, why do we experience this? In Chinese medicine, um, they've got a very strict, uh, a very direct answer in that regard. Mm. Chinese medicine says um, the spiritual hierarchy, Tao is it's the top Tao, which is like the, the intelligence that rules everything that follows. Tao created heaven. And heaven created earth. So heaven is not the Christian notion of heaven in Chinese medicine. Yeah. Heaven in Chinese medicine is the spiritual hierarchy. That's 12 levels of spiritual hierarchy, resembling the 12 notes of the keyboard, of the, of the piano, the 12 notes of the musical notes, the 12 months of the year. So every, the 12 is quite profound. Everything's regulated by those 12. And then we got 12 meridians in the body and 12 hours in the day. And, and so, so um, the spiritual hierarchy then the, uh, created earth and then put uh, the human being in there as the mediator between heaven and earth in order to evolve earth. So our job as human beings is to receive the information from above, but at the same time draw in the energies from the earth <clears throat> and then combine the two spiritual energies and earth energies in order to develop something new. So our job is to evolve the physical, to make the physical better and better and better. So the way I see it is, um, it's already much better to, to live in, to come into form now than it was 500 years ago. So can you imagine incarnating in 20,000 years? It's gonna be, will be a buzz, will be a party. <laughs> <laughs> so we're working very hard now to make it better and better and better. So every time we come in, it's gonna get better. It's yeah. getting more exciting. It's getting more exciting. It's getting more effortless. And, but we all the time need to, but our job all the time is <clears throat> to receive the spiritual energies, to then to draw in the earth energies and process earth energies and spiritual energies in order to develop the physical. Mm -hmm. So our job, we basically work for heaven or the spiritual hierarchy. And as human beings, we are in charge to evolve it. So you could call it heaven incorporated, you know, like a, like a music. <laughs> yeah, great. <laughs> and, and a big CEO, the CFO is Dow. Yeah, yeah great. And, and, and we, are, we are sort of like, um, we are the workers in that field, yeah? Yes. And, we, and our job is to evolve, to make the physical better. So our job, the, the purpose of us is here to make the world a better place. Mm -hmm. and, but we only can make the world a better place if we have lots of energy, lots of chi. That's why we start, that's why I do Kung Fu, so that I can act. I can do stuff. 
I don't do kung fu training, martial art training in order to kick someone's ass. That's irrelevant. I want to I want to improve this life. I want to be I want to work hard as as hard as I can. And I want to work as hard and, and, and long as I can. And I'm 61 years old now, so I want to work really hard for another whatever, 25, 30 years, and then oh, that's it, move on. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. so like bang, just move on within boom, that's it. I'm yes. back on back on the other side. Yeah. And so, but till then, I'm going to kick ass. Yes. And um, in order to do that, I need strong body. And, and in order to create a gorgeous world, in order to be part of this movement to make this world a better place, you need to be strong. Mm. You need to be healthy, but you also need to be happy. And the happiness comes from feeding the energy organ. Because if you don't feed the energy organs, we can't get happy. Because happiness is an inner state, not an outer state. Yes. So we can't get happy from, from constantly buying new cars and uh, buying the, the, the external world doesn't make us happy, but engaging with the external world suitably and effectively. So we express ourselves as part of it and improve it. That makes us happy. And in order to do that, I need strong chi. I need strong blood. And in order to have strong chi and energy, I need to rejuvenate the energy organs all the time. And that's why I live the chi cycle. Oh man, I love it. Thank you, you yeah. so much. That was epic. That was really oh, epic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I I learned so much and I'm sure our audience too. Um, I would love to have you on again. There are so many questions that just yeah, came yeah, up yeah. during the talk though, so it would be great. But thank you so much for your time. And um yeah, you're welcome. I hope it goes really well and thanks for all your good work you've done with tens of thousands of people already, and I'm sure many more will join. Yeah, yeah. Let's spread the tea. <laughs> Let's do that. Let's spread the tea. Thank you. Thanks, Joseph. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.